Hello, so this is DEX week 2023. We have Masood here who will be talking today about advancements in techniques to reduce energy consumption and lead to the evolution to battery-less devices. So thank you, Masood, for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Masood, can you do a little bit of an intro of who you are and the company that you're working at and what is it all about? So my name is Masood Azurgari, and um, I'm CEO and co-founder of Admosic Technologies. Um, what we do at Admosic is essentially we are trying to address the problem of how are we going to bring the next 50 billion IoT nodes into the market in a power efficient, cost effective, and a sustainable way. And that's at the high level what the company is all about. At the macro level, what we're doing is you're coming up with a connectivity solution that is an order of magnitude lower power than the competition. And by doing so, you can reduce the power consumption of your edge connectivity devices to the point where they will, will either never run out of battery or the battery life extends by several orders or uh, they can run without the battery altogether. So it's very interesting what you're saying because we're talking about an explosion in the number of devices that need to be connected. So what's driving this growth in the number of connected devices? So it's uh, the fact that a lot of the tasks from the portable devices, such as your cell phones or computers or anything that you have with like a lot of computation power, a lot of those tasks are being moved and pushed over to the edge devices. And edge devices are usually the ones that are, you know, the endpoints, they are running on a battery and they are standalone, they are single connectivity type of thing, and they communicate to the cloud. So those devices are the ones that you're gonna see a lot more of it. They're gonna, you're gonna see a lot more of it in the consumer electronics, in healthcare, and mobile accessories and head devices, human interface devices. So those are the, the main driver behind the, the explosion of these, uh, these components. Essentially, anything that is an endpoint IoT device, and it's a broader IoT term, meaning that it could be uh, your, your head devices, or like I said, it could be your uh, continuous glucose monitoring device that you wear, it could be your mobile accessories. They are all turning into sophisticated edge connectivity devices that run on battery and they're going to have to have their batteries replaced frequently if their power consumption is not well controlled. Like I mentioned earlier uh, that, you know, uh, during our private conversation that in the U.S. as of 2019, we were throwing away about 3 billion batteries a year and that's only in the U.S. and that's about 100 batteries per second. Wow. So think about, you know, the cost, the um, environmental impact that those batteries now think those numbers and multiply by a factor of 10 because you know because of this explosion in the in the iot market yeah so your solution or the way you're approaching the problem is that we'll get rid of some of the batteries or we're going to increase the duration of these batteries so how so, are you thinking about addressing so i this? guess you know the way fundamentally what we're doing is we're reducing the power consumption of the platform so the power consumption of the platform uh, when it's reduced uh, from the same battery, it drains less power, so the battery life will be extended by the same factor. So if you're reducing the power consumption by a factor of three, your battery, or five, your battery is gonna extend its lifetime by about five times. So that's the first thing you, first benefit that you get from our technology. But since the power consumption is so low on, currently in our design, in our solution, uh, you can bring in technologies that up to a few years ago was considered science fiction, like, you know, harvesting energy from the environment. People have been talking about it for, for so many years. Problem is, you know, if your consumption is not low enough, no matter how much power you extract from the environment through, you know, either uh, photovoltaic cells or temperature sensors or, you know, motion uh, transducers, no matter how much power you collect from the environment, you're going to lose it very quickly. The way harvesting works is you accumulate power from the environment or energy from the environment over time up to the point that you can, for instance, uh, support one wireless transaction. Now, if that wireless transaction takes 10 times less power, 
you can do that transaction 10 times more because you only need a small amount of power to make that function happen. So that's why, you know, with our reduced power consumption, energy harvesting becomes a reality. In fact, there are <clears throat> products that we are shipping that, uh, that our end customers are shipping that currently don't uh, need any batteries. Uh, they're just running off of the, uh, the light in the environment or other sources. That's very interesting because you're painting a vision where we can harvest energy from our environment without requiring batteries. So you are enabling this type of solution. So what are the other challenges that you see to make this type of solution work? And what are the opportunities for other startups to also enable these type of solutions? So, so like I said, you know, there's two, two aspects. There is, there is the, uh, the collection of the energy and there is the consumption part of it. So the consumption has to drop significantly. Of course, that's what we are doing. And also, you know, the efficiency of collecting energy from the environment has to, has to improve. Uh, both are challenging problems. Like in our side, we spend about a good number of years, maybe three years, perfecting the design if your design is solely running off of the environment. Because you, if you have light, your design, your system works. But what if you have a brownout and all of a sudden the light is not enough in the environment? Is your system behaving properly or how is it going to gracefully shut down and come back again? These are problems that are uh, not easy to solve and it takes time and effort and uh, talent to, to address. The way I see it is that you are enabling a reduction in the power consumption for these IoT devices and potentially also using devices that do not require a battery at all. So what are the use cases or applications that will gain the most value today, three years and five years from now? So just to give you an, an anecdotal example, uh, it's, it is going to be a journey. It's not like at the very beginning you have uh, a solution that can address a broad set of market with any power consumption. The fair example would be Wi-Fi. When you know the Wi-Fi began, or you know, 20 some years ago, uh, people were happy enough to get a megabit per second through Wi-Fi connection. Nowadays, you get over a gigabit per second and are still complaining. <laughs> you know? So that transition from a megabit per second to a gigabit took about 10 to 15 years. So as an example, this is what we're gonna be heading over the next decade probably. You know, We're gonna have to start with platforms that uh, extend the battery life to like three to five times, maybe, maybe more, maybe less, depending on the platform and the usage of the power in that platform. And then over time, we're going to, as we increase the efficiency of the uh, collection device or collect, where we collect the energy from the environment and we come up with more sm smarter and brighter approaches to um, convert that energy to efficiently to, to a storage element. And then, you know, we have to also keep reducing the power consumption of our connectivity device to, to be able to live on a much smaller power and much uh, uh, lower uh, current consumption. But, you know, the use cases, like I said, it's everywhere that you have a portable endpoint IoT device that runs on a battery, that's where the use case comes from. For instance, you know, remote controls being one of them. Uh, any human interface device like keyboard and mice, um, uh, tracking devices could be like, you know, some healthcare and, and medical applications. Could be any uh, mobile accessory type of devices that you know run on a battery and they always run out of battery, you know, in the wrong moment. Those are the market segments that uh, can immediately be, that, be addressed. But as the technology matures, it expands its footprint to to much broader markets. And then when you're thinking about these broader markets, what what would you say is the limiting factor to reach those broader markets? Is it improving on the energy harvesting side of things? Is it on the the way we use that energy? I think, I think we need to fundamentally rethink the energy equation, meaning that you know, there are components in the energy equation that uh, contribute to the overall consumption. The, uh, the collection, the conversion of the light or whatever that source is into, into electrons and the storing it on a device, and then using that storage, stored energy efficiently. So on three segments that uh, requires its own uh, innovation and um, we are working on all three. 
Awesome, awesome. Also with partners. So question, we, we've had a great set of sessions today uh, talking about digital transformation. So when you think about digital transformation, thinking about five to 10 years uh, in the future, how do you envision our work? How do you envision our life, the way we play? How do you see it changing and becoming different from what it is today? So, so I would say the one thing that would happen is probably all these integration of these IoT devices in our day-to-day -day life will be a lot more seamless. Like uh, John was saying earlier today, you walk in and you immediately get recognized by the devices that are in your home or your office. And based on your characteristics, personality, and preference, you're going to have different, uh, different environments, different uh, applications available to you, different features turned on and off on you. Uh, I think the... Um, identity and uh, secure identity is one of the aspects that would be very crucial in the next uh, few years and coming up with solutions that can secure your identity in a seamless way and in a very secure way would be would be crucial as you walk in and all these iot devices recognize you how do you make sure that it's really you how do you uh, kind of get that uh, level of identification platform uh, established with a wearable device that uh, that can can help you better utilize the the sensors and the devices around you. So sounds like you, you're envisioning a future where we move away from a mass infrastructure that is the same from for everybody to an environment that it becomes customized to each person that is using it. And also an environment that, you know, all these different uh, devices work more seamlessly with each other. They don't, doesn't matter if they're, you know, for instance, when nowadays when you buy a Wi-Fi device, it doesn't matter whether your access point is built by this company or the other company. And they all work seamlessly. So we need that level of seamless operation and seamless uh, experience within the uh, IoT environment. And a lot of progress has been made over the past couple of years with uh, protocols like Threat and Matter. And uh, we're gonna see, hopefully see more of that in the next five to 10 years and uh, live in a much, uh, seem much more seamless and easier life when interacting with the machines. Thank you, Masood. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you for sharing your insights today. I'm looking forward to have you the next time. All right, thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.